Hi everyone, this is Clemmy Games and welcome to the Indie Game Backlog. In this episode, we will take a look at Trulon, the Shadow Engine, a turn-based RPG developed by Kai Games and released on Steam in March 2016. For disclosure, I received this game for free. This game first caught my eye due to its artwork, which in my opinion is really beautiful. I especially love the look and design of the characters, evoking an anime-like aesthetic. And, interestingly enough, this is contrasted with 3D environments which, while initially strange, did eventually grow on me. There are even instances of pixel art thrown in, such as when you are exploring the world map, and even in the design of some of the enemies. While I do love pixel art, the inconsistency of the art style here did look strange to me, as though different amounts of effort were put into the creation of different art. Going back to the gameplay itself, this is a turn-based RPG or JRPG records with the typical elements of a grand story or conspiracy, turn-based combat, stats and leveling your characters, and even equipment that you can find and equip in order to make your characters more powerful. You play as Gladia, a young monster hunter who has learned the art from her father. At the outset of the game, Gladia is sent by the mayor of the village to investigate strange disturbances and increased aggression from the local wildlife, and so your adventure begins. There is a unique take on turn-based combat here, where instead of the typical menu-based setup, in Trulon, we have cards instead. Your character has a default basic attack card, which can always be played, and on top of this, cards, also known as tactics in-game, confer additional benefits or drawbacks such as the protective stance which lets you attack but also increases your defense by 50% until the next turn or the fast shot which allows you to play another card immediately but also decreases your attack by 25% until the next turn. New cards are gained through defeating enemies, exploring the environment for loot and even from completing quest objectives and you can manage these by choosing what to add or remove from your deck of cards. On top of the card that you draw at the beginning of every turn, we have a wild card feature in which a narrow pool of cards have the ability to show up in addition to the cards in your hand and the default attack. This gives the player some flexibility and added options when creating the deck. The equipment that you find do also have the standard effects such as increasing your max health, increasing your magic, etc. However, one interesting system here is that of Assault Tactics, which are added benefits that you get when using randomly determined cards. Essentially, at the beginning of each battle, I believe 20% of your cards in the deck are designated with a lightning bolt icon, which indicates that it is an Assault Tactic. Based on your equipment, such as one with the effect of all Assault Tactics stun enemies for one round. Using said Assault Tactic cards then results in this effect being applied. Since you can equip up to 3 pieces of equipment which confers such benefits, Assault Tactics then become an essential part of the strategy in this game. For example, I had equipment which stunned enemies, healed my character, and lit enemies on fire, causing damage over time, making these cards especially powerful possibly turning the tide of battle if used at the correct time. On top of this interesting battle system, we have the whole political intrigue setup, which is common in these JRPGs which often see neighbouring kingdoms at war. There is the element of both magic and steampunk in this game, providing a nice contrast between the mystical side and the mechanical or physical side of things which could possibly lead to interesting developments down the line. There are also interesting little level or area design mechanics here, such as map design, which requires you to explore the entire area before providing you a shortcut to get back to the quest objective, or even stealth sections in which your party has to avoid roaming robots or even evade the searchlight at a military outpost, all of which added to the experience. Overall, really good impressions of Trulon the Shadow Engine. 
there is a decent amount of lore and world building in this game, which may be due to the fact that this game is linked to an author who is writing a novel set in the same universe. The Trulon Project is an interesting one to keep an eye on, so do check it out if it sounds interesting to you. Anyway, that will do it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment if you like. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.